Today we're going to talk about a certain integration trick or maybe it's just an integration substitution which allows you to solve many 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 contest integrals very very quickly. So in fact I think a famous Putnam integral can be solved using this trick. Maybe post if you know which one in the comments. So the trick that I'm talking about is the fact that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the integral from a to b of f of a plus b minus x dx. Okay, so let's derive this trick real quick and then we'll look at a couple of applications. So we're starting with our function, integral from a to b of f of x dx. And now let's make a substitution. And what substitution? Well, it's really spelled out over here in the statement of our trick. So let's set, maybe I'll use the letter t. So x equals a plus b minus t. Okay. But notice that that immediately tells us that dx is equal to minus dt. And now we just have to sort out the bounds of integration. So when x is equal to a, and that gives us the equation a equals a plus b minus t, which pretty clearly leads to t equals b. Furthermore, if x is equal to b, we'll, we see that that leads to t equals a. Okay, so we've made our substitution for our variable, for our differential component, as well as our bounds of integration. Now we can rewrite this integral. So let's see what we'll have. So we'll have the integral from b to a, because of this switching right here, of f evaluated at a plus b minus t, and then our dx is minus dt, like we said right there, so minus dt. But now we'll take this minus sign and switch the order of the bounds of integration, leaving us with the integral from a to b of f of a plus b minus t dt. But that's exactly what we have over here with just the dummy variable of x replaced with t. So that establishes this rule. Now let's look at some applications. So our first application will be to evaluate the integral from zero to pi over two of sine cubed over sine cubed plus cosine cubed. Okay, so just so that we're on the same page here, let's calculate our a plus b minus x term. So very clearly that'll be pi over two plus zero minus x. In other words, pi over two minus x. So let's maybe just be explicit. This is our a, b minus x term. So that means we can rewrite this thing as the integral from zero to pi over two of the sine cubed of pi over two minus x over the sine cubed of pi over two minus x plus cosine cubed of pi over two minus x dx. Great. But now there are some nice identities at play here. In fact, sine of pi over two minus x is simply cosine of x. So that turns into cosine cubed. And likewise, this will also turn into cosine cubed. And this one will turn into sine cubed for a very, very similar reason. But check it out. Now, if we add this integral to itself, the numerator will be the same as the denominator. In other words, let's take twice this integral, but rewrite it so that one of the terms is as is and one of the terms is using our trick. But after putting those two integrals together, you'll see that we simply get the integral of the number one dx. But that clearly gives us pi over two. Okay, let's look at another one. Now we've got this problem that looks slightly scarier, but it's really just wrapped up in a lot of like fancy structure. It will fall very, very quickly to this trick. And that is the integral from minus c to c, one over f of x, plus c dx. And this is given the condition that f of x over c equals c over f of minus x. And I think writing the condition like this is has this really nice kind of symmetric, anti-symmetric quality to it. That being said, the version of this equation which we'll need will be solved for f of minus x, giving us c squared over f of x. Okay, great.
And now let's see what our substitution turns into here. So our a plus b minus x in this setting is equal to minus c plus c minus x, which is pretty clearly equal to just minus x. So when we make our substitution, we just replace x with minus x. Okay, so let's see what that leads us with after the first step. We have the integral from minus c to c of 1 over f of minus x plus our constant c dx. Now we'll apply this magenta box, and that'll give us the integral from minus c to c of 1 over, let's see, we have c squared over f of x plus c dx. Now I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by f of x just to like clear my complex fraction. That'll leave me with the integral from minus c to c. I have f of x in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I'll have c squared plus c times f of x dx. And then from here, perhaps what I'll wanna do is factor a one over c out of the whole thing. In other words, factor a c out of the denominator. That's pretty clear because I have a greatest common factor of c in the denominator. So that gives me a one over c out in front of everything. And then I'll have the integral from minus c up to c of, let's see, I'll have f of x over f of x plus our constant c dx. Okay, great. So now let's maybe bring this equation up and then we'll like finish it off. Okay, so this is where we ended up on the last board and now we'd like to use the equality of these two integrals to simplify everything. And I'm gonna do it like this. Well, maybe perhaps first I'll set our integral equal to i. And then I'll use the fact that i is the same thing as one half times i plus i. So that's pretty clear because one half times two is equal to one. But now I'm gonna take one of these integrals and write it as the original. And the other integral is write it as that form. Okay, so I've got one half, and now I'm gonna write the original integral. So that'll be the integral from minus c to c of one over f of x plus c dx. And then my new form will be one over c times the integral from minus c to c of f of x over f of x plus c dx. Great. And now it looks like I'm pretty close to having some simplification. One problem here is that I've got this one over c out in front of the second integral, and I have a plus c in the denominator, whereas a one in the numerator right here. But I can fix that very quickly. If I multiply this by one over c, and this in the numerator by c, well, everything is gonna start to simplify. Now I'll factor my one over c out. Maybe let's do that like this. So this one over c comes out giving me one over two c, and then I can very easily add those together. So I have one over two c, and then the integral from minus c to c of, well this turns into f of x plus c over f of x plus c dx. But that's just a fraction which is equal to one. So we're integrating again the function one over an interval. That just gives us the length of the interval. But the length of the interval right here is two times c. So we have two c over two c, which is one. Okay, so like I said before, this is a really powerful but very simple trick to solve integrals that seem really tricky. And it shows up in contests a lot. I think maybe a good homework exercise from here would be to write your own integral that is solved using this trick. Maybe post what you come up with in the comments. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.